there, Frankie Day, back on YouTube. Okay, fellas, it's Frankie Day back on YouTube again. Okay, guys, uh, before we get started right here, um, there's lots been going on since I made the last video. Right now, Frankie Day's out of retirement and I'm back to work again. And, uh, you know, uh, draw, draw Social Security and also my naval pension don't give it too much nowadays, so I got to has some extra money come in so I can buy more plastic. And I'm feeling good. I'm taking a lot of vitamins now. And I've been out there participating in a lot of outdoor activities with my sailboat club. And I've been sailing a lot of my sailboats and everything and kind of enjoying this beautiful summer weather we have out here at Ohio Land. It's been very warm and hot and humid. And uh, so like I say, a lot has been going on and uh, I haven't got back on the Alabama yet. So I want to start on her tomorrow and get her all finished so I can make a video of that, as promised. And I'm really truly sorry, everybody, that I didn't return back on the video here for uh, the update of my CSS Alabama. So Bruce Kerr, uh, he's a fan of mine, and uh, he's got a CSS Alabama, and he's building his, and I'm helping him build his, too. And uh, so you stay tuned, uh, Bruce. I'll have this uh, the final reveal for... Uh, for Captain Raphael Sims, uh, CSS Alabama. And so I'll, I'll have probably a final view of that tomorrow. So I, ain't, I don't have too much to do on her over here. So anyway, guys, I've been farting around with another build lately. We've been off and on for two weeks now, straight working on it. It's uh, Acrid Miniatures uh, B25B Mitchell Bomber. It's known as the Doolittle Raider. This is uh, the late, great uh, Ted Lawson. Captain Ted Lawson's... Uh, Machine the B-25 he flown in uh, during the Tokyo raid the ruptured duck and uh, He wrote a beautiful book called 30 seconds over Tokyo. And there's also a movie of MGM's and uh, They made a movie that too back in 1944 and uh, So he's actually a pretty good movie. It's a classic as a must-see must-watch and the Doolittle Raid uh, was a very, very essential raid at the time, fellas. They give the Japanese a taste of their own medicine when they did those at Pearl Harbor, you know. And uh, the, the B-25 was well selected is because it was small. It had the range. And it took off and handled very well. And it can carry a ton of bombs. And uh, she was converted to take off the USS Hornet by uh, getting rid of the, uh, the bottom uh, ventral turret. Have it fared in with a piece of uh, aluminum. And a lot of it stripped out inside the V-25 to make room for additional Merlin cells and bladders and also uh, more uh, emergency uh, fuel cells uh, for the for the long mission ahead. And, of course, we all know they were 200 miles out sooner than they, I mean, further out than they were supposed to participate. And that's the reason why all 16 V-25s, except one, uh, crash landed up the coast of China because they, they ran out of fuel. Now, if they was if they took off in time as planned, they would have made their targets and made it safely in the Chuxiao, China, which is in Chongqing. The B-25 was uh, came out of the drawing boards in 1936, and by 1940 she was uh, redesigned into the B-25A. And uh, she was NA-40, and uh, the NA-40 was a prototype, which is the, uh, in the beginning of the design, and they found out there's a lot of things that can be done on it. And they redesigned it to the A model, and they made it the B, which the Jimmy and the boys use in their mission. The difference between the A model and the B model is, is uh, actually the, the A model didn't have the Bendix turret, dorsal turret facing aft. They had just like like a glass pack of glass across it. Almost like a bomb maker's window. And um, it was a very successful mission. Uh, Jimmy Doolittle at first thought he was a failure. He knew he thought he was going to get court-martialed because a loss of air crews and loss of aircraft. And, uh, and uh, he found out it was very successful. It, it did its job. It turned the tide of the war for us. So the Acrid Miniatures B-25, I bought this about, oh, I don't know, about 1999, somewhere around there, 98, 99. 
and uh, she's been on she's been around for a long time and uh, I found out they don't make make this no more so they they more or less went to uh, Academy makes it now I heard and actually it's as the documentary's mold that box on a different manufacturer okay guys we'll take a look at this b25 right here and uh, we'll uh, discuss my dead on her and uh, bring back the video to yours truly and uh, finish up the video Okay, guys, this is the famous B-25 B Mitchell bomber. And this is Ted Lawson's ship. Now, the weathering on this aircraft here is very, very subtle. Because you got, one must remember that these airplanes were relatively were new, air, new machines. They were almost a year old. And so they actually were kept in pretty uh, mint condition and maintained it in mint condition. They weren't war-weary and they never got involved in... Uh, and um, in, in, in war, where they usually get really wear and tear a lot, take them, uh, going on buying missions all the time. So she is uh, more or less, they're, they're more or less, these Mitchells are more or less pretty well new. Okay, fellas, you can tell on the nose right there. We'll zoom in a little bit nose here and show you the ruptured duck right here. And, um, excuse me, guys. There's the, the crutches and Donald Duck character on there. Uh, I noticed on Accurate Miniatures they made a mistake on the Donald Duck because on Ted Lawson's B-25B, which, which it showed it on there, uh, Donald Duck, uh, he was wearing a headset with earphones. And, of course, you see all those stars around it, which relatively making the noise, but... It's close enough, guys. No cigar, but it's close enough. And uh, this is Ted Lawson's machine, the B-25B Mitchell. And you can see the weathering on this thing is very, very subtle. And um, these were actually were pretty well new aircraft at the time. And uh, they were kept pretty well immaculate condition and well maintained. The V-25 is a very beautiful airplane. It's a loudest airplane in the United States Army Air Corps, even the Air Force, when they were re we, uh, when they used them. And um, you got those Curtis Wright Cyclones, each engine's got 1,700 horsepower in each engine. So it takes a lot of power to get a B-25 off the deck of an aircraft carrier. And I've seen the footage on there. And they more or less show the B-25 taking off almost less than 100 feet. What really helped, folks, was when they had that 40-knot uh, wind that stormed ahead at sea. And with the flaps down full and the engines fully revved and the brakes released, the plane could got nothing better to do, just float up the carrier. Uh, Ted Lawson, uh, in uh, in the book Three Seconds Over Tokyo, even the movie it showed him taking off the taking off the Hornet. He didn't have his flaps lowered. I'm surprised the naval the naval personnel aboard the carrier, uh, the aviation boatswain's mate, instructional mechanics, he didn't uh, catch him with his flaps on. Usually, most 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 Airedales in the Navy. Who are handling deck on on on, on deck um, and trapping on deck, you know, uh, for takeoffs and runs and everything. I mean, just actually, just the deck personnel. They didn't. They make sure that your flaps are down and everything else. But I guess they overlooked it. And uh, so the B-25 took off the carrier very, very, very well. And uh, the B-25 came out at the right time. And it earned its name, the Doolittle Raid, and was used exclusively throughout the war. It was a sweetheart of an airplane. It was a pilot's airplane. The B-25 was very, very versatile machine. And uh, the air crews found out they get more, they put more armor in it like that. They can make it more deadlier. So you had a lot of them experimented during the war, fellas. You know, they, some of them took the green nose out and added uh, four, uh, uh, 450 calibers, and of course you had your pack guns on the side, and um, 
carried the bombs. And even the G models, the H models, they had the cannon on. They had a 20 millimeter cannon. And uh, so actually this here is an early B-25 when it first came out. And the C and D model came out after this. They found out that they couldn't use the uh, the bottom turret because it actually made the uh, the gunner sick. Virgo. When you're peering in through a periscope and the airplane moving about, it's almost like being seasick aboard ship. Motion sickness. So they found out that was a failure design, so they no less to use it anymore. And they moved the aft turret forward behind the cockpit and had waste windows in there and also had tail turret in there. And they, uh, that was the final version was the B-25J. So right here's the B model. Jimmy Doolittle's uh, famous B-25s. And uh, she's a sweetheart of an airplane, guys. Uh, so I think the B-25 is probably one of my favorite airplanes. They're very, very popular when I was a boy growing up. If you didn't have a B-25 on the block, you are ostracized. Okay, guys, we'll be just carrying back to yours truly and finish up the lid. Okay. Okay, fellas, I'm going to get, I'm going to put the B-25 away. I'm going to go ahead and get Holly Alabama tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day off, and I'm off uh, Thursday, so I got some modeling to do. I got the Danmark coming up, too. I'm now I'm starting to rig it up. I got the fitting set for it and everything I got. And I was very, very lucky to get that off eBay. And, uh... So the CSS Alabama should be done by tomorrow. I got it mounted on a nice piece of wood and I got me a little shelf out in our bedroom. I'm going to put it against the wall. And uh, so I'll keep her in the bedroom in there. Oh boy, I get tired guys. I just got off work about an hour and a half ago. And uh, so I'll let you guys know I'm still alive. I'm still kicking. And uh, so... Tomorrow will be the final reveal for the CSS Alabama, so stay tuned for that, fellas, and I might be able to play a little jolly tune on my Jazzmaster guitar. Yeah, I think I'll bring out that Jaguar. It's a Jazzmaster uh, rest while I'll bring out my thinner Jaguar. Okay, guys, I'm out of here right now. I'd like to thank everybody for tuning in. May God bless and uh, make Mama happy. And uh, please subscribe and happy modeling. And this is Frankie Day signing off. I'll catch you tomorrow. Bye, gentlemen. Take care, fellas.